Thanks for joining us today for this Trinity Sunday. My name is Jason Anderson, pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church. It is a blessing and a joy to have you with us in worship today. Even though we are still physically distanced, spiritually, of course, we are closer than ever. I really, really want to say that Kate is standing right outside the door right here, and it's totally annoying. But, but isn't that just like par for the course? That is exactly what we're all going through right now as we are still in this crazy time of pandemic and safe and with so much to be thankful for. Dear Church, I don't have a message for you today. It is coming to us from Elizabeth Eden, the National Bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. She has an important message for all of us, for all of the churches throughout the country in the Caribbean. However, my message for you is, in the midst of all of the things that are happening in our world right now, to stay the course to be filled with the love of God, to be um, redeemed by the love of Christ, to be empowered and inflamed by the Holy Spirit so that we can enjoy this, um, well, this gift of creation and and in fact, dance spiritually with God and and with ourselves and, and with all of creation, with one another. They sound like They sound like fanciful kind of words. And I mean, the Trinity is a fanciful kind of concept. And isn't that what faith is all about? You know, it doesn't make perfect sense. And yet we experience faith as great power. May we be filled with that power to persevere through whatever struggles we're going through right now, knowing and hoping in the promises of God, that God makes good on God's promises, that we are beloved children of God. You are beloved.
Except God. On the first day of creation, the wind of God blew. Whoosh, whoosh, swoosh. God said, Let there be light. Crackle, boom, bang. There was light. God saw that the light was good. Then split. God divided the light and darkness into day and night. On the second day, God said, Let there be a sky. Pillow, pillow, poof. There was a sky. God saw that the sky was good. On the third day, God said, Let there be water in dry land. Drip, drop, kerplunk. There was water. Crackle, crunch, snap. There was dry land. God saw that the water and land were good. Then God said, Let there be plants and trees. Rumble, rustle, pop. There were plants and trees. God saw that the plants and trees were good. On the fourth day, God said, Let there be a sun and a moon and stars, glimmery, shimmery, shine. There was a sun and a moon and thousands of stars. God saw that the sun and the moon and the stars were good. On the fifth day, God said, let there be sea animals that swim and birds that fly. Wiggle, splish, splash. There were sea animals. Plutter, putter, tweet. There were birds. God saw that the sea animals and birds were good. On the sixth day, God said, Let there be animals of every kind on the earth. Growl, growl, prowl, snort. There were animals with fur. Skitter, scatter, creep. There were big bugs. Slither, slink, hop. There were reptiles. God saw that the animals and bugs and reptiles were good. Then God said, Let there be people on earth. Blink, wink, hiccup. There were people on the earth. God saw that the people on the earth were very good. On the seventh day, God said, It is time to rest. Phew! Phew! Ah! Oh. And God and all the creation rested. A reading from 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Here ends the reading. Hi, I'm Kara, and you're watching The Children's Tech. Today, we are talking about the seven days of creation, and on each day, God made something new and exciting. So let's take a look inside our Bible and see what happened on each day. Let's see. On the first day of creation, God made... Hello? Who, who are you? Are you part of God's creation? Yes. What? What What are you? Well, I'm a sea monster, of course. A sea monster? That, that doesn't seem right. I don't think God made you. I was created on the fifth day of creation. It says right there in your Bible. So God created the great sea monsters and every living thing that moves. See? God created me, and I'm even great. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. What was creation like? 
It was pretty exciting. When you only have seven days to create a whole world, it goes pretty fast. I popped my head out of the ocean and watched as the first birds flew through the air. It was good. It was even great. Wow, that sounds pretty crazy. So let me get this straight. Even though you look pretty different than me, God made you just like he made me? Exactly. You got that right. Wow, that is awesome. Well, thanks for coming to visit us today. You're welcome. Have fun learning about all the great things God created. And don't forget about us sea monsters. See you later. Bye. That was so cool. I've never met a sea monster before. I can't believe God created everyone and everything in the whole world. I hope you have an awesome week exploring God's creation and having so much fun. Let's pray together. You can repeat after me. Creator God, you created everything and everyone with so much love. Help us to treat it with love and kindness. We love you so much. Amen. Bye, friends. Have a good week. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way, so also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up, all of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity, probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God and flowing from God. 
Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one, and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many, black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. 
We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. Fulfill
one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O God. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see different kinds of waterways, the array of plant life, birds of every color, fish, great and small, wonderful and wondrous insects, vast mammals and reptiles and all living things, naming each of them good. Hear us, O God. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Rise up leaders of this and every land who in faith and neighborly love seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work towards justice in often ignored communities. Hear us, O God. God of care, you create us in your image. Help us to see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, especially Linda, Pat, Ashley, Ruth, Bob, Leslie, Ron, Thomas, Carl, Karen, Margie, Jim, Linda, Linda, Eleanor, and those we bring before you now. Hear us, O God. God of companionship, you accompany Trinity, this body of faith. As the rhythms of summer are still sheltered and placed, make room for joy. Protect all who work in harm's way. Renew all who need a time of Sabbath and shelter all who have no place. Hear us, O God. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We hold you to that promise, especially in the midst of so much death. We think of George Floyd, our sense of national unity and fragile security, the death of our economy and prosperity and joyful plans, the death of comfort self-righteousness, trust. Guide us in our grief along paths of redemption and reveal new joys to inspire our hope. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ who first taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And, uh, we usually conclude worship service with very similar words to the conclusion of our prayers, actually. At the end of church, I say, go in peace and serve the Lord. Now, I want you to immediately serve the Lord by making two phone calls. One phone call to somebody who's not going to be surprised to hear from you. Someone who you might talk to fairly regularly. Share God's peace with them. And secondly, phone someone who will be surprised to hear from you and share God's peace with them. 
Sisters and brothers, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.